Hi, so in this video we're going to be looking at absolute and conditional convergence in the solo growth model. So in order to examine those two, two types of convergence, I'm first going to start by deriving an equation which helps us examine it. So we're going to start with our fundamental equation of the solo model, which says that the change in capital equals investment minus break-even investment in the terms we should be familiar with and I'm simply going to divide through both sides by capital per capita like so all the terms are divided by capital per capita and so we get that this first term is actually the growth rate of capital per capita because it's the change in capital per capita divided by capital per capita that's what a growth rate is uh, this is equal to our investment term divided by capital per capita and minus this constant because our capital per capita cancel out in this term so we have a constant that i will refer to as a sort of break-even investment constant um, it is no longer break-even investment, it is just a constant. This doesn't vary with capital per capita. However, the growth rate of capital per capita does vary with the level of capital per capita we're at. It is a function of capital per capita, which means it varies over time. So what we can do is we can draw a graph of this investment divided by capital per capita term, and with this constant term, of or more specifically this constant term of delta plus n and what we can do is look at the gap between those two terms and that will give us the growth rate k because we're subtracting one from the other the gap between them will be our growth rate k so let's do that okay so when we plot these two terms on a graph with a capital per capita on the x-axis and the y-axis just kind of captures our depreciation and our investment terms we have a graph that looks something like this. So obviously, as I said before, this depreciation or break-even sort of constant is just a constant. So it's just a horizontal line. And our function of savings, uh, in the savings output divided by capital per capita is a function that looks something like this. It's just a decreasing function. I won't go over uh, why, why the function looks like this. You can work through that in your own time if if you want to. So what, what this says is that we have a steady state level of capital K star where these two terms are equal because our break-even investment term is equal to our just actual investment term and they're just the per capita values or they're just divided by uh, capital per capita. And so, but what if we are, we have a very poor country that has the capital all the way down at K1, and we compare this with a slightly richer company that has capital at K2. So the country at K1, if we use our graphs to look at this we have then this sort of investment term is all the way up here and our depreciation is constant at uh, delta plus n so our growth rate if you remember the equation we just derived before our growth rate of capital per capita is equal to s f of k divided by k minus delta plus n. So that is clearly just the difference between the two curves we have here is the SFK over K graph minus the constant uh, sort of break even term as I've been calling it. So that's the difference between these two curves is the growth and because our investment is above depreciation we have positive growth of this low income or poor country here of given by this arrow or this distance here. Uh, now if we look at our rich country, K2, they only have investment 
that goes to about here, whereas de the depreciation break-even term is constant still. So they have lower growth, their growth is given by this distance. So what does this say? This says that poor countries, uh, K1, or just all poor countries, have higher growth rates than rich countries. Clearly the, the arrow for the poor country is larger, their growth rate is larger. This implies that we have absolute convergence of economies, where all the economies are transitioning to this steady state here, but the rich countries are doing it at a slower rate, at a lower growth rate, than the poor countries who do it at this large growth rate. And so in the long run, all economies will converge to some state. We have poor countries with higher growth rates, they're catching up to the richer countries. However, what are we assumed in doing this? This is only true if the rich and poor countries have the same savings rate, they have the same population growth rate N, and the same depreciation rate delta. That's because we've assumed we've assumed that we can compare the rich and poor countries based on these same graphs, which uses savings, which uses depreciation, and uses population growth rate. So we've assumed that rich and poor countries have the same parameters here. And if that is true, the SOLO model predicts absolute convergence, that everyone converges to the same state. And we will have that a lower in initial income will cause a higher growth rate. We then have inco the income gap shrinking over time, so rich and poor countries have converging living standards. However, this obviously isn't shown in the data because we actually have widening inequality in lots of developing countries. We still have wide inequality across the world, so we don't observe absolute convergence. This doesn't mean that the solo model fails, it just means that this assumption fails, that we have the same savings rate, same population growth rate, and the same depreciation rate in different countries. So we need to look at it where we don't assume that we have these parameters all the same. So here's a graph of one example of conditional convergence we could have. We have the same axes and we're still just using the same constant term delta plus n, but I have given the rich country and the poor country different savings rates. So we have rich country savings rate SR, which is there, and the poor country has savings rate SP. Uh, which is there, and what what does changing the SR or an SP do? We have that SR is greater than SP, so the SR curve, the rich country's investment curve, is higher than the poor country's investment curve. So let's imagine that we have a richish country at K1, and they have this level of capital, so they're about here. And we have a poor country, a poorer country will have a lower level of capital stock per capita. So they're here at K2 is less than K1. And they are here. So if we look at what I've done here, I've just chosen one country that is richer than the other. Except that K2, the poor country, uh, country 2, their investment is based on the curve that has their SP savings rate and the rich country, country one, has an investment that is determined by this higher curve because their, their um, savings rate is given by S rich. Maybe it would be better if I'd subscribe to this K country rich and country poor. Uh, so it's a bit clearer. But so their investment level is given by a different curve. And so using the same logic as before, we see very different growth rates because the rich country has this higher level of investment. So its growth rate is given by this distance on this arrow, whereas the poor country growth is given by this smaller arrow. So clearly the rich country in this scenario is growing at a faster rate than the poor country. So what does this mean? The fact that we've changed the savings rate changes the speed of convergence and it changes the growth rate of each economy. 
So Solo isn't here predicting absolute convergence, it's predicting conditional convergence. So the poor country, uh, country P, is converging to this steady state based on its savings rate and the other parameters, and the rich country is converging to this steady state uh, based on its savings rate and the other parameters. So conditional convergence says that each country converges to its own steady state depending on the parameters in the model. And so we can have rich countries growing faster than poor countries, as is the case in this example. And the rate of growth, the size of this arrow, actually just depends on how far away from your steady state you are. That's all it depends on. So as we can see, this poor country is very close to its steady state, so it has a low growth rate. And this rich country is quite far from its state, the steady state it wants to be at, so it has a high growth rate. So your actual your actual growth rate doesn't just depend on whether you're rich or poor, it depends on how far away from your growth rate are. So this conditional convergence is very different from absolute convergence. We don't have countries all ending up at the same area. Clearly these two these two countries are moving to different steady states. In the long run, they're going to be at different levels of capital per capita. And this is seen in the data. This this is backed up because what we see is we see different countries, rich and poor, growing at different rates, and they're all moving towards their own steady states. So this version of the solar model where we differ our savings rates is is fairly accurate. It's a lot more accurate than the idea of absolute convergence. We could also vary uh, our n parameter and our depreciation parameter, uh, but that would be a bit less interesting. It's basically just we'd shift shift this horizontal constant curve, and as you can see, this this would then give uh, different steady states. So that's that's also something that. Uh, different countries clearly do have different population growth rates, we know that, so that's something that you can look at. I won't be covering that, but I will just raise the point that it's not just steady uh, savings rates that we vary, but that's the one I've decided to look at here, because we, we do expect different, set, different savings rates in different economies based on whether they're richer or poorer. If you're poor, you'll tend to consume most, if not all, of your income. So that sort of wraps up the difference between conditional and absolute convergence. Okay, so in the next video, we'll be looking at a sort of summary of the predictions of the SOLO model uh, to kind of wrap up on this model. So check out the playlist for the remainder of those videos and subscribe for future videos. And if this was useful, make sure to like.